Hello and welcome to Single Parent Success Stories. Today's guest is Katrin Horn, and she is a self-love activist and a life coach. She helps women love themselves unconditionally so that they can model this to their daughters. Welcome, Katrin. It is <laughs> Thank you so to much. have you. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here and to be with our audience. Yes. So thank you. Share with us, please, your story. How did you discover uh, self-love and life coaching? Meaning I had a lot of self-loathing, really. I wasn't happy with myself at all. And that had me do a lot of jumping through hoops and testing myself and making have to do things differently and that's the thing about life isn't it sometimes we have to suffer a lot before we're willing to change right as long as we're keeping it together as long as some of it is working well it will work and I think we'll be much better served really by thinking um I don't think I'm doing the right stuff let me try something completely different and so when I allow myself really to start thinking differently, so instead of telling myself off, I started noticing what was good, not only about me, but about my situation, about my surroundings. And I started focusing on the good things. And that allowed me to start having a little bit of compassion for myself, you know, so I couldn't go from self-loathing into self-love. I had to break it down in several steps. So I started off with compassion and I could feel compassion, um, if not for my grown-up self, then at least for the little child that I used to be, right? It's very difficult to feel upset with a child and we can always forgive, I think, and feel compassion for a child. So that's where I started. And then I built on it till I arrived into unconditional self-love. And that sounds something very like being very, very selfish and if it is well then I'm all for being selfish but maybe it's not being selfish actually because I see that as bringing your best self to any situation that's really self-love to me yeah it's it is so true but if I go the way I was growing up you know once you have kids you, you're gonna kind of put yourself on the back burner and take care of the kids but if we are you know, not taking care of us ourselves. If we're not putting, you know, charging our own battery, <laughs> what kind of person shows up for others and for ourselves? Like some kind of half baked, <laughs> without having best intentions. You know, being like barking and being miserable and creating misery all around you. So exactly, exactly. And yet, you know, we believe that mothers have to be self-sacrificing. And we think that, oh, I must make sure to tell my children to go after their dreams. I must make sure that they will have a beautiful life. Uh, and in order to do so, the more I sacrifice, the more chances they've got of having everything. I mean, I had parents like that. I had a mother like that. Um, and I think it's really the contrary because children don't do what we tell them to do, do they? <laughs> right? They model our behavior. So the more we model what we want them to learn, I think the better they actually do learn. So we can't tell them, go after your dreams. If we are showing them every day, day in, day out, how we are sacrificing our dreams for them. And no child ever, 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 ever wants to be the reason why their mother didn't follow her dream. I mean, think of the weight of that. Oh. I'm the reason why my mother was dissatisfied with life. I'm the reason why my mother wasn't happy, right? I mean, why would you want to do that to anybody? So I believe we all have to take care of ourselves, first of all, and that's how we get to be the inspiration for our daughters and perhaps even our sons to do the same. I'm totally on your page, on the same page with you. <laughs> Because I am following my dreams and hopefully my children will pick that up and, and follow them. Oh, they will. They will. They definitely will. 
And what greater gift, what greater gift to any child than having um, a life full of love and laughter and dreams, a fulfilled life modeled to you, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they, they'll take and, and they, they'll do that for themselves as well. <laughs> Well, I hope we're here to inspire them to, to feel that it's not, um, well, it's putting yourself first, but putting yourself first is really what is going on most of her life. And I wish that just for 10 seconds, she had thought of putting herself first, right? That she had done something crazy or something illogical or whatever, something that would have brought her a little bit of respite, a little bit of happiness, right? And I think we all want our mothers to be happy. And as children, we work for it. We work so hard to make our parents happy, don't we? And it would be really great if they would just help us a little bit so that the whole weight of that doesn't fall on us. And I know you're uh, one of your podcasts talked about how to stop living through your children, right? And that's exactly it. Yeah. Mm. We always want to please our parents and we want to make them happy and we never yeah. want to feel like we were the reason they didn't follow their dreams, like you said. Yeah. So I think that as parents, we should just go ahead and help them. Right, so they don't have to do all the heavy weight, uh, the heavy lifting. They can just go ahead and be themselves because we are being ourselves, and by being ourselves mean, means that we are not being perfect, but we're being authentic. And I think it's very difficult to relate to people who are being perhaps not perfect, but who are trying to be perfect. Right, we can't relate to them. We can't feel them. We really need to feel people in their like their unadulterated, un filtered version so that we can connect to that real person. We can't connect to somebody who's, who's censoring herself, somebody who's filtering out anything that is uh, undesirable, if I can say it like that. Right? I, I, so think, yeah, I think perfect, perfect doesn't exist. <laughs> We're all human. If you are perfect, it means you're putting masks just to be, look perfect on one, uh, like from one side, but somewhere else. <laughs> you're somebody else but after a while it could become difficult you know uh, by exactly and if you if you think about it if you're modeling uh striving for perfection to your daughters i mean do you really want them to pick up on that i mean where's the happiness in imperfection there isn't any because you're always going to fail so you're setting yourself up for failure and you're telling your daughters this is how you should live yes Totally. So please, please share with us what are some of the tools or techniques that uh, parents can implement to become, you know, more dream forward looking like? <laughs> I love that question. And you're so right to ask the how, because we sometimes get stuck thinking we can't do anything because we don't know what or how. Right. But the thing is, you just have to get started. And I have people start well, with my process. We start with believing that we are right. We are right to follow our dreams. We are right to prioritize ourselves. This is what we must and need do. Right. So the first thing is belief. Then we create the vision. Well, what is it really we want to model to our children? What is really our dream life? What is it? Like we put words on it, we start connecting with it, we start creating belief that this is possible, right? This really is possible. After that, step three is practicing. So we practice by creating happiness provoking events through the day, pleasurable events. We create what I like to call moments of bliss, where we allow ourselves to have that moment to ourselves during the day, where we either listen to music we love, we look at photos that inspire us, or we go and put on a beautiful dress, or we ring a friend, we do something that fills us with pleasure. You can never have too much pleasure. And your pleasure doesn't take any pleasure away from anybody else. It just creates more pleasure, really. So we need to train ourselves to prioritize that. So it means it comes before 
your children's needs, right? And you don't have to spend two hours listening to music or calling your friends. It could be five minutes. But getting that into your day is vital, right? We need you to feel good. So we put that into practice by having, um, what could I call that? A routine, really. So depending on where you're at, uh, we will tailor make it to where it is you're at. So if you're not used to taking care of yourself, we'll start small. And if you're used to taking care of yourself, we'll start big, right? Because as I say, you cannot have too much pleasure and you cannot model too much pleasure to your children. So that would be the first three steps in my process. I love it. I think yeah, it all starts with, with belief because it's the biggest component. Even though before you achieved your dream, you must believe that it is possible. And if you don't have that core belief, <laughs> nothing is going to happen. And well, I do. Yeah. You, you won't take action if you don't believe. Like if you don't believe the dentist can solve your pain problems in your mouth, you won't go and see the dentist. So you have to have the belief that he can actually or she can actually help. Right. And then you'll take the action. So as long as you don't believe that your dream is possible, as long as you're listening to people who say, oh, you're so unrealistic, or shouldn't you be taking care of your children, or you know, unhelpful things like that, as long as we, we are paying attention to that, we're not taking any action. And we're not creating the benefits. And we might even be creating even more frustration around this because we're all the time feeding ourselves with, oh, I should be taking action. I should be doing this. I should be feeling that. I should be thinking this. And we don't do it, right? And this is all just adding to the burden, really, I feel. So it's getting to, you, as you say, to the belief, not only that it is possible, but that you are worth the trouble. Yes. That's important. <laughs> yeah, because we, we persuade ourselves that we are not worth it. Oh, it's not worth the effort. Oh, going to the hairdressers again. No, it's not really that necessary. I can do without it. Yeah, I used to go, how you call it, before the pandemic, at least once a week to a hairdresser and just do like a blowout. And it just makes you feel better. Because you are taking care of you. Nobody's going to come and say, oh, like, it's up to us to, to make that choice that we want to fulfill ourselves, you know, pour, pour in the love, the positivity, the energy, because if we don't have it, we cannot share it. Exactly. We, can, we cannot give point. what we don't have. Exactly. That is so beautifully put. And I love your example with the hairdressers. Right? Because we think, oh, I must look good for other people. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Because what's below is how do you feel about yourself? Yeah. When you look at yourself in the mirror, do you go, wow? Or do you go, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And what do you want to model to your children? Do you want to go, wow? Or not, really? Yeah. I'm a great believer in morning routine. It's my alone time when I, you know, take care of me. <laughs> I wake yeah. up early, I go and I watch the sunrise on the beach and I take a walk and I listen to good music or podcast or audio book to feed my mind with positive things. And then I come back, come back refreshed. I'm ready to take on the day. I'm ready to be the mother that I can be for my kids. <laughs> And not some checked out person yeah. who is like always like, oh, I have to do this and this. Exactly. You've got that down to T. So as you say, you recharge your batteries and that allows you, in my language, to show up. At to your children. Yes. So please tell us what makes you happy. What makes me happy, I allowed myself to discover that recently, is beauty. And I know that that can seem so superficial, but really beauty inspires me. 
So it could be a beautiful building, it could be a tree, it could be a person, it could be anything. But I like to surround myself with beauty. That way I relax and I enjoy. And when I relax and I enjoy, I'm open. I'm open for the happiness. I'm open for the pleasure. I'm ready for more. And there's always more. Right? Yeah. In life. We don't have to limit ourselves. We don't have to say, oh, I made sure to feel a little happy today. Right? We can go all out and say, I was ecstatically happy today. Bring on more, please. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I recommend to people to practice 10 minutes of you every day. Do something that sets your soul on fire. If you have exactly. more, more than 10 minutes, all the best. Go, go for it. <laughs> Just like we train our physical muscle or like our oral health, we brush our teeth to have a good oral health. What if we practice happiness and joy to have a good, powerful happiness muscle? <laughs> I know. And I've got a Facebook group called Choosing Happiness because it really is a choice. And I know that people think, oh, well, no, either you're happy or you're not. But it's like that muscle you just mentioned, you can actually activate it and then you can start working on it. You can build that muscle. And again, think of the effect, think of the impact on your children of a happy mother. Think of it. Yes. Wouldn't you have loved to have had a happy mother? How many of us can say we've had a happy mother? And I believe if you've had a happy mother, you've got no problems being happy. It's all of us who didn't have one who are finding it a bit, uh, a bit difficult. Yes. If we, if we live and we learn uh, that the way of sacrifice is the way to live, then we model the same thing unless we make a choice. Because every morning we have an opportunity to create our day and we can choose how we want to feel. Whether we want to be happy, grumpy or angry. We always, always have a choice. Yeah, and sometimes just, in the heat of the moment, it's difficult but, to separate yourself from it. But it is yeah, important. But I think it's it's something you can learn. And when I say learn, it might take some time, right? So if you've just been through a painful divorce or whatever is going on in your life, it's really difficult to jump from being mis feeling miserable to ecstatically happy. So please allow yourself some time to go through all these steps towards happiness, towards feeling so good about yourself that you will allow yourself to dream. Yes. And then you will allow yourself to believe that you deserve that dream. And then you'll go after that dream. Yeah. Very beautiful, I think, what you said. And uh, would you share with us what is some of your self-love practices? How do you energize yourself every day? Yeah, so if, if you're not used to this at all, uh, please don't think that you have to be like me or you have to spend as much time or energy on it as I do, right? You can start from wherever you are. Um, so what I like to do when I wake up in the morning is to meditate because that fills me up. I also listen to inspiring things the way you do and I journal. Then I have my exercise routine, which is just eight minutes but I do it every day. So that keeps me fit and in shape. Um, and when I've done all that, um, I make sure to dress and look as good as I can. And I'm 55, so I'm not aiming to look 26, right? I'm not aiming to look something that I'm not. I'm just after looking my best with the wrinkles, with whatever I've got going on. It's just looking my best, what is possible for me today? Because when I make sure I look my best, well, I feel my best, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm I like I'm wearing a dress today and I'm enjoying that. I've put on my necklace. I'm enjoying that. You know, so that is just reminding me, wow, I made a little effort for myself today so that I could allow myself to feel good. But I could be wearing uh, jogging pants. I could be wearing anything as long as I feel good in it, right? I don't wear hand-me-downs. I don't wear things that are old or got holes or dirty, right? That's just not an option. So I set myself up for a gorgeous day. So what I do is I'm ready for work at 10 in the morning and I start working and I love work. Mm -hmm. I can't help it because I love people and I get to connect with a lot of people during the day. So I just love working. So 
uh, I work till I've, I stop working. But all through my day, <clears throat> like when I've got clients, I always leave a lot of space in between my appointments mm -hmm. so that I get to nurture myself. And that could just be walking out into my flower garden and having a look at what's going on there. Or it could be drinking a hot drink or it could be just connecting with a friend on over the phone. It could be gifting myself uh, a shopping opportunity. It could be um, anything really, a, a squirt of perfume or anything, you know, just to remind myself how worthy I am and how gorgeous I am. So I connect to that several times a day. And then in the evening, I make sure to no longer work because I love work, so I could go on, right? But I need to tell myself, okay, I've done my bit. Now, let me do something completely different. And so I do something completely different in the evening, depending on where I am. So I take care of myself in the evening too. It could be connecting with my husband, going out for dinner, going out to a concert. It could be staying at home, reading a book. It could be anything, but I choose it consciously. And I make sure to have something doable, right? So I don't have to stay in that, oh, I'm so miserable, what should I do? I've got lots of options already open for me. I just need to choose, right? So if it's a concert, I will have chosen ahead of time, I will have booked. Um, so whatever I, I'm doing, I always know that there's an exciting part to my evening, if you see what I mean. Yes, totally, and you look very young. I wouldn't give you anything over than Tori. I think in Zoom, that's doing me favors here, but uh, <laughs> thank you, I'll take that compliment anyway. Yes, so, so what you are doing is working because you look very radiant, energetic, beautiful, and, and mm. you just exude mm. positive energy. <laughs> I'm lapping it all up, thank you. But I think beauty comes from the inside, right? It's really the eyes, what's, you know, what's inside that's spilling out on the, on the outside. Yes, yes. So I love I love your practices and I think they are incredible. Uh, I do like, like a similar morning routine. I love watching sunrises. <laughs> and then throughout the day, I make sure I sing because that's my passion. And I do at least 10 minutes or more of singing. And that's kind of energizes me on and uh, on other days, like on the weekend, maybe I'll do a painting or I bake something that uh, that I like. Wow. I li I'm all about creativity. <laughs> That sounds exciting. I used to be a musician. So um, I used to play the harp, but I've stopped playing the harp. But what I've done this year is that I have hired somebody to cook our meals mm. because I'm very much into healthy food. So I spent a lot of time cooking and I thought, oh, I'm not enjoying this very much. How can, how can I not cook so much? Mm. So I find a person who cooks us like nice and simple meals. And that frees me up a whole hour a day. And during that time, I play the piano. That's amazing. I know, so from seven till eight, I play the piano. And then at eight o'clock, my dinner's ready. That's amazing. I it is. It. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, find, I still find it amazing. I enjoy that every day. So I think it's about creating support for our best lifestyle, really. It's, it's allowing ourselves to imagine something like, I don't know anybody who has a personal cook. Yeah, I, I don't either. <laughs> so I had to, I had to allow myself to imagine that. Mm -hmm. and people think, oh, that's so expensive, but it isn't that expensive, right? And I can pay for it, so I'm good. But having the idea was really revolutionary for me because I thought, um, is that possible? Is that at all possible? And the first people I contacted, they want to do like restaurant meals every day. And I, that's not what I wanted. I wanted healthy meals, but, you know, not like three courses or anything. Mm -hmm. So I found that person exactly when I was ready to hire her. And I just found the whole thing so exhilarating because I think when we make ourselves available for our next step, when we allow ourselves to imagine it, then we get presented with those opportunities, don't we? Yes, totally. <laughs> what is the number one advice would you give to your 18 year old self? Wow. I was suffering from depression when I was 18. So had I been able to hear any advice, it would be to 
relax, you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. right? Just relax, you're going to be okay. I think that would have helped me enormously because I thought my whole life was going to be a disaster. And I think this comes up for us again when we're suffering, like if we go through divorce, we can start thinking again, mm, from now on, it's going to be a struggle. But if you can tell yourself, just relax, it's going to be okay. Yeah, that's how this podcast was born, to inspire single parents <laughs> that it's going to be okay. <laughs> it is, yeah. And it absolutely is. That's a profound truth. We don't always know how or why or what. And we can get caught up in that and start thinking, but I can't see how it could be okay. I'm suffering so much. This is dreadful. What's happening to me? Why is this happening to me? We, we ask ourselves those useless questions, really. And the quality of, of our lives is based on the quality of, of the questions we ask ourselves. So the why questions are never very interesting. Yes, totally. <laughs> I actually mentioned it in my book. <laughs> you. The quality, like you are, you are what the quality of the questions that you ask. <laughs> and as you evolve, as you change, the quality changes. Yeah. And your life so could, could be different. Exactly. Can I give you an example, a very concrete example of that? Please. With, with, I was getting fed up with cooking healthy meals every day. Mm -hmm. So a uh, uh, um, question that would not have served me would have been, oh, why do I always have to cook those meals? Why can't somebody else cook those meals? Blah, 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 blah. blah. A much more interesting question is, how, how can I not cook? and still eat as well. Yeah. And what would I like to do with the time that I free up? Because when I say, what would I like to do? I came up with the question, with the answer, I want to play the piano. Yes. Okay. And that could motivate me so much that I actually started taking the action because as long as we're not inspired, we don't take the action. Yeah. So it's really about asking yourself the questions that will provoke interesting answers, not the defeatist answers, not, oh, that's not possible. Yeah. Right? Yes. We want the interesting answers, and we can only get the interesting answers if we ask the interesting questions. And you can learn that, can't we? Totally, yes. <laughs> I learned from Christy Marie Sheldon, uh, the power of the why question like what would it take and then yeah you fill in the blank as opposed to like uh, let's say you want to buy something and you say oh i can't afford it instead of saying that what can i allow to happen for me to have this in my life exactly. so reframing it and making it a question instead of a negative statement like i can't afford this <laughs> or i can't see myself or it's out of my budget what can yeah. I create to make it possible for me to, to for it to be in my budget, for example? Also, I like to ask myself, what would it look like? Yeah, yes. What would it look like me buying this thing? What would that look like? Because then you start looking at your life and, and you start seeing areas that could change. And even more importantly, what would it look like? It would look like a woman who felt abundant enough to gift herself that. That is what it would look like. So I could move myself towards more of that abundance, right? It yes. gives us solutions. Yes, yes. Uh, what would you say was the smallest thing that you've done that had the biggest impact in your life so far? The smallest thing. Well, that's a cooking example. Mm -hmm. Like the small thing of hiring somebody to support me was very big can I think of something else um the smallest thing I think was to start meditating really mm -hmm. yeah I would say that my meditation practice really supports me in a massive way and the more you do it the, the more benefit you get from it so like the first year of meditation well We'll do a little bit, won't it? But like after 25 years, you've really got it down to a T and you can really allow yourself to benefit completely from it. And your life transforms. 
Yeah, so true. If you if you had to compare the person before meditation and person after, what noticeable things would you mention? Uh, <clears throat> I would say that meditating, I'm no longer afraid of my emotions. Mm -hmm. So I know that I can feel fear and I'm not afraid of the fear. Mm -hmm. I can feel emotional pain, disappointment, uh, setbacks. And I'm not afraid of that because I can process all those emotions. And that just, I mean, to me, that is real freedom because I'm no longer trapped in avoiding my emotions. Yeah. I'm, I'm free to experience them. They're no longer threatening to me. Right. So bring it on. Bring on the fear. Like, oh, wow. Great. Yeah, I love it. I think it's very important and big actually to be able because a lot, a lot of times we avoid our emotions or we shove them somewhere. We don't want them to appear and all they want is to be heard and felt and, and then they will pass. But yeah, I think it's amazing what meditation can do and what it did for you. Yeah, so again, don't just do it three times. You really have to build a practice, right? Yes. You really have to stay with it, as in all habits, in, in practicing self-love, self-care, as you say, in your sunrises that you enjoy. I'm sure that every time you go, you benefit a little more. Right? Yes, yes. You get to appreciate the beauty of the nature and you get to connect and you get to be present when the day is being born. So you didn't miss anything. Mm, gorgeous yeah I love that what is happening anything fun happening in your life right now what are you excited yeah. about <laughs> I'm really excited about uh, I've just been on holiday we bought a boat mm -hmm. and so we've been sailing on the Atlantic coast I live in France so I live opposite you uh -huh. um, <laughs> and we've been sailing around all these islands and we formed the project of sailing all the way to the Baltic Sea over a three-year three, three year period. Ah. So that's going to be really exciting. Yeah. Uh, lots of sea and sand. Um, this summer we had a lot of sunshine. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll find some more of that. So that's one fun project. Another <clears throat> fun and exciting thing is that I'm gearing up to buy my chateau because my dream is to live in a chateau. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that is always happening more or less. And how I create fun is I go and visit chateaus. Mm -hmm. I talk to chateau owners. Yeah. Um, I connect with antique dealers and I look up, I mean, all kinds of chateau information. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy. So I'm always having fun with that. More practically, I've got a friend arriving from Paris tomorrow and we're going to spend the week together. That's always fun. We haven't seen each other for two years now. Yeah. And, you know, there's, you can have so much fun when you allow yourself to. And it's really the first step is seeing things differently, isn't it? Like allowing yourself to be so important that you're worth the effort of making those projects and seeing it happen really yeah i love it is there anything i haven't asked that you want to share i think we can tell our audience that they can totally do it yeah, yeah? yeah. so you said powerful questions and i think really if you can allow yourself to ask the questions and answer them without judging yourself mm -hmm. right? because sometimes we say oh or subconsciously, oh, I can't ask that question because, wow, that would be so disappointing to me. But if we can really allow ourselves to go there and give ourselves a little bit of compassion, mm -hmm. I think that could be a powerful start to transformation, really. Yes. Yeah, it's all lies in the questions that we ask. If people would love to find you or learn more about you, where would they go? They would go to katrinahorn.com and you spell that K-A-T-R-I-N-E-H-O-R-N.com. And they can download a free gift so they can get on my newsletter list and they will receive useful tips and tools on self-love and happiness. I love it. And we're going to include all of this information in the show notes so you can connect with Katrina if it resonates and 
get the self-love tools that you, we all need self-love and it's not selfish. It's actually selfless. It is for your own benefit, first of all. First of all, and then it's for your children's benefit, right? Yeah. And then it's for the world's benefit, for your neighbor's benefit, for your boss's benefit, for everybody's benefit. Yes. So thank you so much for coming and sharing wisdom on self-love. I loved having you. Have an amazing rest of your evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. I enjoyed it so much.